Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video we're going to cover uh, two scripts which are exactly the same. So one's the free public available version and one's a uh, pro version essentially that's included within my indicator pack that most of you probably may have or may not have. If you don't have and you want it, just PM me on either Discord, Twitter or TradingView or whatever you may want. Uh, that way and I'll, I'll show you the price. So the in the pro version is a pack that includes uh, six indicators uh, from last count uh, that do a lot of stuff and I'll slowly go through them as we go through the indicator series. So moving on to this video what indicator we're looking at is the moving average trend uh, or I like to call it it's just all it is is a moving average uh, a script that has eight different uh, eight different functions it calculates and gives you the strength of the trend that's why I simply named it moving average trend the things that make it unique from other scripts is you have all these different inputs so most of you may uh, be familiar with everything up until here and everything else is alien and I recommend Again, if we just spend all our time covering the different uh, uh, moving averages, we'll be here forever. So I recommend looking at, it at your own time. And you have the full names, and you have Google search. So just use the search function. Uh, for demonstration, we'll probably demonstrate the whole moving average, the EMA, which is the default, and the RMA, which is uh, the rolling moving average, which is a nice indication of strength. And like all my public scripts, they have a nice, uh, a nice dis uh, sort of uh, description about them, and you can see the descriptions. Again, this is an open uh, public script, so if you want to use it for your own and uh, use it and use the calculations or take notes, you're free to do so. You have my blessing. And it's a pretty long script. It's and like most of my scripts. This is uh, teaching on the max amount of outputs, uh, so you probably have to get rid of stuff if you want to add in your own stuff. So let's go to the actual script itself. As you can see by default, uh, you have a cloud, you have sequence numbers, you have these uh, red and uh, green dots, and these tiny, tiny crosses. So we'll go through all of them one by one. And we'll turn off, firstly we'll turn off the sequence, and we'll turn off the cross. And we have to turn on the circles, off the circles, and I forgot to turn, have that tied to the crosses, but that's neither here or there. So now we are left with just the cloud, which and the to affect the cloud and to change the type, you just go to this drop down menu and you can change the type of moving average you want. This source will affect it as well. This is the input you want to choose. So open, high, low, close for all it means is it takes the candles. Uh, all of the data points on the candle, so it takes the open of the open, the high, the low, and the close of the candle. It tallies them up, and then d uh, divides them by four. Most indicators by default usually have this set to close. So if you set it to close, it does change uh, the trend, and it can change uh, depending on the indicator. You can change uh, where things will cross. So do be wary of that. Uh, of that. Excuse me. Next, looking at high, low, close, free. Uh, this takes up the uh, the just uh, as the name suggests. It takes the high, the low, and close, tallies it up, and divides it by three. So I'd recommend sticking it on either this or the open, high, low, close four, just because you are getting data points. It does introduce lag, but the they are indicators within uh, they are moving averages within here that reduce lag, and I'll show you that here, just in a minute. So before that, we'll look at time frames. So time frame is a new function that's uh, baked into TradingView, and it's available. And I'll sh if you're if you are a coder yourself and you want to know how to do that, all you need to do if you want to add that into a script, just have this input here: time frame equals speech bubbles and time frame gaps equals false, and that will lead you to have a have this drop down menu on all your all your scripts, and it will affect the script in entirety. So you have something that does, would not be affected by that. Do make uh do kind of uh have that in your background. So let's go and ch and change this to say we're in the hour. We we'll change this to the four hour, and we'll see what it does. So as you can see now, you're greeted with uh 
uh, steps and, and these steps here. These steps essentially uh, are only there because we are taking the 4 hour bar of data. So we're waiting for the 4 hour close uh, uh, four and the 4 hour bar to close uh, before we uh, have a data point. So that equates to one, uh, 4 1 hour candles. So 4 1 hour candles. So now we have to wait for 4 bars before we change, make a change in our data points. And that's why these steps are here. Let's say if we were to uh, make make it uh, even even more pronounced, and we want to go into the one day. Now we're waiting for twenty four candles before we have a change in data points. So let's say let's say we are close on the day here, which is will be let's go to UTC because most things do reset in UTC. So we close the day here, and now we have a new ch uh, data point on the day. So now we're free to change our our uh, our data point, and our new close will be here. So new data point will be entered at this bar. So it's a nice way to say if you're on a lower time frame, look at higher time frame, and say let's look at four hour candles back, and let's say we can even drop down to a fifteen minute candle. And now you even see a more blockier, a blockier approach. To that the gaps is there if you uh, and it does not work with the clouds just because the clouds are a fill function and not a line function. So it works for the ribbon. I'll show you the ribbon portion in just a second. We focus on the cloud just now. Go and change this to same as chart, so we get rid of the blocks. So let's say I, I, I want to change the type of moving average. So I just let it drop down, and I pick the moving average I want. Let's do uh, RMA or rolling moving average. So this, as you can see, the cloud starts to become more pronounced in the the higher trends, and it takes longer for it. To counteract itself, this is a even. Uh, it lags even more, but again increases the strength of the trend. So, if you want to just know the uh, trend direction or trend strength, this is a nice indication. And you don't want to if you don't care about the crosses. And I'll show you the, uh, what I mean by crosses in later. Let's say if you care about the crosses and you want to use these moving averages to indicate something, I would recommend sticking to the whole moving average because it's a faster reactive. As you can see. The areas of green starts to cut away, as you could, and they are much thinner in these trendy parts. And th th when they start to consolidate, it has a knock-on effect where it rounds at the top, indicating that that was sort of consolidating, and it will flatten out before pushing up. We'll look at the opposite direction where we're going down. There we go. We see a push down. It starts rounding here. That's a nice indication of we're stopping, and we're pushing back up. With all moving averages, you gotta be wary that in areas of consolidation, they're totally useless, and they won't work in terms of buying, of scalping, or buying uh, for any targets. So just be wary of that. And that's n that's not again a limitation with my script personally. It's just a, lim a limitation with all scripts, in essentially with all moving averages, because you're w you are waiting for a data points, at, but at the same time you're weighing, uh, you're weighing and uh, and tallying up past data's data points. So let's say you want to change the uh, the inputs for the cloud. So if you scroll down to the bottom, there's the cloud. So it's the title and you have the M MA cloud. So you have eight points. You have the second one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By default it's set to two, six, eleven, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four, twenty eight and thirty four. So these are the moving average inputs it uses. So if I were to show input uh, enable the show cross, we'll do that. As you can see, I think trading view is trying to be annoying. As you can see, there's this small uh, small crosses. They're very tiny, uh, not intended to be tiny. I, I think I, they're meant to be set to auto. I don't know why trading view uh, has done it like that. So it's an issue with trading view. So it gives you a cross. That means the first moving average, so the first MA, cross the eight MA which essentially means we had a flip in our trend. So we had our shorter trend uh, overpowering our longer term trend. So that is the first and this is the eighth. Eighth and first. And those will affect these crosses. And uh, let me go into styles and enable the, enable the long MA signal and the short MA signal. These are a Again, wait for moving average crosses. So these wait for 
the second and the six which it was not intended it was meant to be seventh but I think I I just did it two across and just m managed to do it uh do it I think no the intended um I just I just did it for, uh for the six just because to make it simple so we can go ahead and say change the moving average to say something a volume weight moving average now we see our crosses that were here for the whole moving average disappear and now we only get this single singular by and we get that on the both bar because your second cross your six at the same time as uh, your first cross your eighth and you can always change this so let's say if I want to change change this so let's change this to the 20 moving average and the 50 moving average wait for a change and it does look like this because again it's uh, filling in between each one and it's filling 20 between 6 and 8 between 28 and it doesn't make sense <laughs> so we'll have to lower these down to say do this just for sake of breathity and this was 20 so we have to be higher than 20 so we'll do 21 uh, 20 25 do 30 35 35 40 40 and 45 now we have the moving average of 20 and 50 and it is the 20 EMA and 50 and waiting for the crosses and we have it fill in a line between 5 and and 20 and 50 so in 5 step increments right Except for this is 50 for some reason. I'm bloody hell. So now, there we go. Now, if we want to change this to moving EMA, we can. We're free to do so. And now the circle buys uh, and the circle crosses are based on the the 20 and the 50 moving average. So as you can see, that's really late to the party, and that's not something you want to pay too much attention to. Let's say we want to go down to a uh, another la laggy, less laggy one. So the 20, the 20 HMA and the 50 HMA. As you can see, you get the buy signal all the way down there, and it carries on trending. You get the sell all the way up here. So it's faster, even though we are entering more laggier inputs, and we can do that here, there. So let's reset everything back to default, and we'll go ahead and change the theme. So there are three uh, three themes by default. Uh, if I were to available uh, make them available in styles, it would be annoying. My favorite uh, the bunch so is the orange and teal, uh, and there's also the option of uh, getting rid of that altogether, so you only look at the close. But that defeats the purpose of having the script because you're looking at a trend uh, script uh, trend uh, trend direction. But let's say if we put no uh, no fill and we want to use another sort of metric to measure that. And the next part of the script we want to uh, we want to look at is the sequence. So the sequence is a simple uh, simple counting uh, measure, and it's best indicated by the source code. So if we go down and scroll to the source code, all the way down, as you can see, this is source code for the sequence counting. This is just as simple as that. So it waits for the close. First is the close that we set, and we can set this in inputs and settings, which I'll show you later. And it just says. Is, is the cell setup met condition met? So if the, if this cell setup is met versus uh, one uh, last bar, and it continues in the same direction, so that means if we get the fourth close close higher than the current close that we're looking at, it will continue up higher, and and it will wait constant consistently do that until it meets the opposite direction. And once it fails, it resets back at one, or if it counteracts and goes the opposite way, it uh, it goes. It gives you a red one or a green one, depending on the direction. And I'll show you that just in a second. Lastly, you have perfect cell setup, or it's when, and again, it's when when the close is greater than the last close. Uh, is uh, last close is greater than the current close, as well as the close being greater than the last close. And it's the total opposite for the buy and sell. So again, it's just a counting metric. It's nothing too complicated. Nothing too. It's n nothing too bad. Hard. So perfect cell conditions only show up uh, in numbers greater than 7, so it only shows up in 8 and 9, that's why by default I only enabled 1, which is the new sequence start, and 8 and 9, which is a sequence reset. So here we have uh, a red 1, 
and that just means this closed close let's say one two three four four closes so that was this close so we closed under under this close so we reset our one but instantaneously we move up and close up higher here and we got one two three four and that close was down here so we close much greater than this so we reset our cycle the opposite way and then we count ourselves up now the eighth bar comes along we give it a, a yellow because we're moving in a, str a strong trend and we and the nine comes along we're moving in a, trend, a strong trend so we give it a golden nine then we reset our cycle at one because nine is the last number within the cycle itself and it doesn't care anything above that and there's no issues about that so let's say if we want to uh, change the how it functions we go into this and say we want to look back three candles so now we change it instead of looking back four candles we look back three candles so now we count this close now we only need to count one two three close and it's a lot closer there so we reset it there and it goes all the way down into eight and again this closed here so one two three and then we are closed here so re close is that higher oh i didn't know that's weird so red then we close this one one two three and we close there and we close here for this so we just about uh and then we reset that as you see we're in a very strong downtrend we counted from one now we're at eight so eight and nine so when you see a golden eight nine it's a nice place to say take profits and usually the uh cycle continues even if it continues an uptrend uh you can let it continue on an uptrend but if you say take profits at eight and nine eight or nine depending on uh which one uh which uh, if you see if you see an eight wait for a nine if it valid if it resets at what uh if you if it's not a gold one uh closed positions uh, and again let's say we take a uh 25 percent 25 percent let the rest ride and we close it at this one uh red one here for the rest of them and same thing we can do here let's say we open a position here based on other metrics and we use the counting measure to see when to take profits we take 25 25 and let this ride and we'll see we have 50% less to, left to ride so that pretty much covers the uh, the uh, sequence side of things we go ahead and turn that off and we go into the ribbon so now we have the ribbon uh, cloud off to enable the ribbon you just go in and you enable it through the styles so the ribbon essentially is the same as the cloud but it's the reason why it's separate is because you could change and have independent moving averages you want to look at by default both of them are set to EMA so just be wary of that and they have their own separate uh, it has its own separate indicator panel where you can select the own uh, your own set of uh, moving averages uh, by default these are set to and fine tuned to, uh, to BTC and these numbers by default are 6, 13, 20, 28, 36, 45, 55 and 444 won't go into too much why these numbers work you can go ahead and backtest them yourself but I will present you with some other numbers that I know to, uh, to work. So we'll go ahead and call these MA sets. We we'll do MA sets to give. And the first one we start with is uh, this set, which is 5, 13, 50, 200, and 800. These are most common, I think, within Forex and the 15 minutes. And most people, uh, I think, within YouTube will be uh, common with these. Next set of MA. MA, MA set 2, we get that 821, 50, 80, 100, 200, and we go into MA set 3. 3, our next MA set is 9, 15, 65, 200, and the last set of numbers that I know to work, and I know I can trust is MA set 4 is 8 13 20 35 55 75 100 200 and that utilizes the all the eight functions and you see this is only four this is five this is also five so it depends on experiment if you want to start using moving averages experiment with which ones works which one works for certain moving averages uh, and which one works the better one so I know for a fact that this one works perfect with a simple moving average it's laggier 
but it's tough to drop it finds retail traders and again that's the whole reason i did make a moving average script in the first place even though i don't use it it's a nice way to support what retail traders thinking where you'd find support uh, amongst retail traders so go ahead and get rid of that and hopefully you've jotted these numbers down you can pause the video and jot them down and experiment so there's also this input here by default it's off and it is use ribbon for cross instead of using the uh for and then it's just for the circle so your green buy circle we'll color shade that in and your red sell circle you can change those to indicate a moving average so we go into the tooltip and it has a nice little tooltip to do that as well so instead of you looking at two and six for a cross it looks at one and two so we'll go ahead and do that. Now we're looking at the 6 and the 13 moving uh, moving average uh, for our ribbon for our cross. So we'll go ahead and turn everything off just for sake of clarity. And we can go ahead and mosey along. And we go and let's turn this off. And that's the reason why they're not tied together. So now anytime the 6 crosses, from the, uh, crosses under the 8, we get a nice red circle and vice versa we get a green circle to buy. And again, EMA is laggy, so do be wary. You don't want to be buying uh, at local tops. You still use the same concepts that I've taught in prior videos and taught around in my live streams. Moving average, again, is just for to look where retail trade is buying and to look at trend strength or trend direction. Nothing nothing else other than that. That pretty much covers everything with inside uh, tre uh, moving average trend. Uh, experiment with the numbers I showed up, experiment with these, uh, do your own research, find out what numbers work, do share it around, uh, write in the comments saying, oh, uh, the TMA works perfect with these sets of numbers and it gives me a perfect uh, trend within the one minute chart or whatever it may be. Personally, my favourite will always be uh, the Hull Moving Average, which I will put as a theme. The whole moving average just because it's less laggier and it gives you a nice indication of uh, a weaker trend and it's a less laggy because that's the main issue with moving averages is the lag factor but that's neither here or there so that'll cover the uh, sort of everything was inside the free uh, free section uh, free part of the indicator we'll go ahead and, and, and I'll showcase the differences from the free section uh, free version and the paid version the paid version and the so the nomination one the only thing that you are you are given is this filter and that's the whole reason why it's locked behind a paywall this filter is just a statistical filter that allows you to smooth out your trend and it works perfectly for uh say let's say we input this it gives a separation and separation will act as a cloud support so we come back into the separation at some point and we can do the uh, vice versa the opposite way so we'll see how the separation is so the actual move for the second moving average for the EMA is this way so we might at some point round up and eat back into this uh, into this as we are most likely to often see that happening and with filter again they have its own it has its own filter section with filter magic uh, it takes it runs it through two processes so experiment with the number sets uh, and the level of strength that you want to increase or decrease the filter and the reason why I allow these to be changeable is because when you're changing your moving average it it changes uh, it can affect the filtering so therefore you would what would you'd ideally want to change the aggressive uh, how aggressive or how passive the filtering will be now let's say we go to the whole moving average as you can see it's a nice little wisp we'll contrast that and, and it, it comes back to that so now we see we have this nice sort of trend and with with this we see it later it, it comes in later and that is one of the things that the filter does it does sort of smooth things out and that's pretty much the difference in terms of between the actual uh, moving average script and the paid version uh, other than the these these plot functions, so you see these red diamonds and stuff like that. So these red diamonds are explained within the explained within here. With potential buys, manipulation, reverse cross, and they are affected by things. So if I pull up a on the side here, if I pull up Word, 
that will give you a rundown of of uh, what the indicators are doing. Sorry for the white background. Scroll all the way down, and this is an outdated version, but essentially, what well, it will perfectly indicate everything. So again, one and eight cross for the cells, eight and one cross for the uh, I mean one and eight for the bytes, eight, eight and one for the cell, uh, two and six for the uh, for the short. Two, uh, it's meant to say six and two as well, but again, I did this in a rush. Uh, blue triangle is the fourth the fourth uh, cloud input and the third crossing uh, so the third cross is the fourth the red diamond is a uh, wave trend so it's not user changeable uh, the ball candle is the second uh, second MA and the 8 MA and the other two are not uh, are not cross uh, are not user changeable so that's something that you want to uh, uh, hover over this or keep this uh, up on the uh, up on the screen for, the, uh, for people who, who end up getting the page, that you know what they do. So that pretty much covers the moving average scripts. Uh, use them as as you see fit. Uh, I personally don't really need uh, find the need to use moving averages uh, all too much. Uh, but if you are if you if you need that if you need moving averages as, uh, to increase your confidence, uh, do try the free version. And if you like it like it and want to try out the filtering do give me a message and uh, I can work something out. So that will pretty much cover for, the, for it this video. Uh, uh, I'm busy with other things but uh, tomorrow I'll, put, I'll try putting out another indicator video and hopefully we cover all the indicators until I finish all the indicators. And then we can move on to actual regular programming where I cover start, start covering coins uh, uh, day by day. I uh, hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day. Peace.